Peter Thomas Fornital here, not at the DRF offices in New York, but at Harvey Pack's apartment on the Upper West Side of Manhattan. Over the course of a series of videos, we're going to be talking to Harvey about some of the best stories from his decades in horse racing, broadcasting, etc. Can't wait to hear what he has to say. So, Harvey, I'm going to ask you now to take us back in time to the 1980s. A new wild idea for horse racing comes up. It's called the Breeders' Cup. What did you think of the idea when you heard of it, and how did you first get involved? Terrible idea. <laughs> I said, it won't work. The people only like the Triple Crown. This is a stupid idea. And then a guy came over to me, and I'm sorry I don't remember his name. He was a very nice guy. He said, would you like to be on the Breeders' Cup? I said, who would hire me? And he said, uh, I, I know the people who are doing the publicity and everything. He said, I think you'd be very good. So I said, OK, go ahead. And uh, then he calls me and he says, we have to get clearance from John Nerud. Because he was the committee. And John said, he's terrific. Put him on. And that's how I got on. And uh, they gave me a five-year contract. At the end of the five years, the people who hired me, the head of sports at that time, left. And they brought in another guy to be head of sports who lasted one year. But while he was there, he did something notable. He threw me out. <laughs> He said, we don't need comedy on that show. OK, that's all right. I, I'm used to that. Being fired is not unique. And, uh, but the, one of the ideas that I had at the track, which really applies to you now, was handicapping contests. And at that time, Naira had a pretty good budget for silly things like that. And I went to the, uh, whoever was in charge of marketing at the time, and I got an OK. And the thing we couldn't figure out was how to prevent them from not entering multi multiple times. And we worked it out. The second year, we did a great job. The first year, there might have been a little bit of it. And we had the contest, and we had it. It was free, no entrance. And then I had a secondary idea that failed, where I was going to charge a $1,000 entry and have a pot of a million bucks. And it was turned down by the Attorney General of New York State, who said, it's a game of chance. And I said, uh, do you know that he's a regular here? He's a degenerate horse player, and he calls it a game of chance? He must be some lousy handicapper. But we never got it, and I continued with the regular one free. Now I notice people charge for it, which is a good idea. I have nothing against it. And I even think somebody's trying to do the one with the big number. So that's OK, too. But we had a great thing, because it was a matter of who got in two and three times. And you knew that they were doing it. We would try and check them out and everything. But we, we really got. Most of the winners were good handicappers. Many of them were Raggerson players playing the sheets, which I also used. And uh, they didn't do me any good because I can't read. But they were very good. There's no question. They still are, I imagine. Anyway, uh, one year, there was a guy at the track who was a raggy player. We called him Mr. Dirt. He did look a little dirty. And he was around all the time. He was once found eating lunch in the trustees' dining room with uh, the owner of Tartan Stable. Now, if I imagine hearing that, I said, are you kidding? I went up and looked, and there he was, munching and dirty as ever. So he entered his mother in an attempt to get two entries. And at the halfway mark, his mother was on the board in the top five. So I said, bring him in. I'm going to interview him. So I brought him in, and he looked disheveled and everything. It was during the day, and I said, the contest right now, if you look at number five on the board, is owned by a lady who happens to be the mother of one of our players. And he took two entries, which is OK. They paid two admissions. And his mother's on the board. And I thought you'd like to meet him. And I said, we call him Mr. Dirt, because he's never shaved. He's never clean. He wanders around the racetrack. And, but he's a very good handicapper. And he entered his mother. And his mother's on the board. and. Uh, I think he's very good. And remember this. And then I said, when I say this line, dissolve. If you're at the racetrack and it's crowded and you see Mr. Dirt, join him. Because no matter how crowded, Mr. Dirt stands alone. And as we faded out, he yelled, graduate of an Ivy League college, which I might add was true. It was Columbia. But that was a great story. It really was. Phenomenal. Then about three years later, one of the guys who used to sit in my office, uh, 
um, DiMucci, Tony DiMucci, who was a degenerate player and uh, really degenerate player. And he, he wasn't a great handicapper, but he entered the contest. And by golly, I looked up on the board and he's in second or third. And we run the last race and it's a grass race. And he makes a big bet on Kruger. Of course, everyone thought Kruger on the grass, Samin on the green. We thought if they start in Europe, they knew grass. Anyway, it won. And he won the prize, which was about $10,000 or $5,000. And he was so excited, which he probably lost in three days. And he said, came to me, he says, I've got to do something for Kruger. I said, I don't care what you do for him. I said, you won the contest. Good luck to you. Then about the next day, he said, I sent him a case of champagne in the jocks room. I said, that was very nice of you, Tony. It really was. And then he says, oh, look, he's in this race. Maybe he wants to thank me or give me a winner. So he runs out to where they walk through the thing to get in Belmont under the tunnel. And Kruger goes by and he sees, he says, Jean, it's me, Tony DiMucci. And Kruger goes, and he thinks four. And he said, he's on seven. He's telling me to bet number four. And he makes one of his ridiculous over, bets a lot of money. And of course, four runs up the track. So did Kruger, but neither one won. So he comes in, he's really mad. And I said, well, go ask him what the hell he meant. And he said, all right. And he went out and he said, Kruger, why did you show me number four? And Kruger went, four bottles broken. <laughs> it's a great story. It really is. And look what it's done for your life. Oh, tremendous. Contests are now very big. And uh, my friend uh, Steve Wolfson was working for his friend at that time, Steve Wynn, uh, at the Mirage. And he sells Steve Wynn the idea of a handicapping contest. And he says to me, would you host it and come out here? So what are they offering? And he said, it was 5,000 cash, round trip first class for Joy 2 and a, a suite. I said, what, what do I have to do? Just come. So I went out there and the first year I took a piece of a guy's try and he hit for about 8,000 and I got 20% of that. That was a wonder. Those, as I said to Wolfson, the best gig I ever had. And uh, it, it was really great. But if, at the track, we had had a guy we called Big Stewie. Big Stewie would come to the track every day. He was a stockbroker. He just walked out. His customers could do whatever they wanted. And he was a big better and a blowhard and a kind of likable guy. He really was. And uh, he, one day I even put up on the uh, board in the middle of the track, track clothes, Big Stewie got it all. It was his birthday. And anyway, as most horse players, he went bad. And he left a trail of bad checks. And I heard he moved where would a degenerate gambler move? Vegas. So now he can be degenerate out in the open. And he shows up, and we're getting the contest ready, and he comes in, and he says, you know, I live here now. Yes, I thought I heard that. He says, what is this? I said, it's a handicapping contest. What's the prize? I said, I think it was 25, 25,000. I said, the entrance fee is 500. I don't even have these numbers right. And he looks at me, and deadpan says, will you take a check? Got and left a trail of bad check all over New York. I said, no, you have to bring cash. Characters. And he, uh, yeah, he was a great character.